This week on Kentucky Afield, biologists are going to get you up to speed on wild pigs and let you know what you should do if you see one. Don't shoot them. Don't scatter them. Let them come in and let them catch them in the traps. Next, rabbit season is now in. And who doesn't love hearing beagles on the trail? There he goes. <laughs> there he goes. Then, freezers are filling up with venison across the state. We have a recipe that you've got to try. We're going to go about five minutes aside. They should be perfect. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> Here it goes! Boom! Oh, oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Wild pigs have become a problem throughout the southeastern part of the United States, but Kentucky biologists have found a new method to deal with them. So Terry, we're out here in Henry County again, pretty close to a location where you trapped pigs a few years ago and showed us some of your eradication efforts. Give me an update on how the pigs are doing here in the state of Kentucky. Well, we've had a lot of success in Kentucky. Pigs are at the lowest numbers they've been in the last decade. We've got an aggressive eradication campaign in partnership with Wildlife Services. To have a trapping effort, you have to get a phone call first. And these phone calls are not coming from the people that a lot of people would expect it to be. These are hunters and landowners that are saying, man, having pigs on my property is no good. So Mark, wild pigs and corn growing do not go hand in hand. That either. doesn't work well, <laughs> no. A lot of damage really quick. So tell me a little bit about what you've experienced with wild pigs here in Henry County. We had a problem, it was down the river, they started coming in, didn't really know at first what it was, and then it got to getting worse and worse. And you're talking about just literally knocking the stalks They just actually down. come in, knock the stalks down, and just knock the corn off. It looks like a bush hog went over it when they come in, and before it started catching some of them, they were getting like a half acre a night, just one group. They were just cleaning the fields. They really mess up hunting opportunities as well. Wild pigs displace our native wildlife species. They displace deer and turkey. They outcompete them for food sources, especially acorns. You think you're gonna hunt near a white oak tree and have a successful hunt, and then all you see are pigs. For a corn producer, did you have a piece of property that were either total losses, or you just said, hey, I'm not gonna raise corn there anymore? We didn't have total losses, but it was starting to get to that point, and then that's when we contacted the Fish and Wildlife to come in. We'll do a landowner visit, we'll look for damage, and we'll set cameras and bait up in the areas where there's sign and monitor the situation. And if we can get pigs on bait, then we'll set a trap. We used to have traps that had trip wires and rooting sticks, and they were would catch maybe half of the group of pigs. Pigs live in sounders. So what we'll do is we'll try to catch that entire sounder. We're not really exactly sure how pigs hit the landscape. We think people brought them in for hunting opportunities. You know, they're not that easy to hunt, and if you go out and you shoot a couple of these pigs, they get smart fast. That's what I was told. In fact, I was told by Fish of My Life, don't shoot them, don't scatter them. Let them come in and let them catch them in the traps. You just said the most important thing is don't shoot, call, because you really want to get a trap out that you can remotely trigger. And that's how we've caught the last group of pigs that we think we've got here in the landscape in Henry County. We're caught using a remote trap and that's really the way to do it. Terry, we've come in here today and this has been a huge success for us. We've captured what may be one of the last remaining sounder groups in Henry County. Right now we're getting ready to test a boar for diseases. Wild pigs carry swine, brucellosis, and pseudo-rabies, and they are not found in uh, domestic swine in the state, and we're trying to keep that from happening. So we're gonna test the blood samples for those diseases. 
So Dax is gonna be doing a heart stick to draw blood. Notice we do have PP on, latex gloves and glasses to protect ourselves from diseases. I typically take four vials of blood and we'll spin those down to eight cryo vials. We've been in Henry County now for, what, five years, four or yeah. five years? And yeah. It's, uh, it's actually been a really rewarding experience here to, to realize we've made a huge difference for the landowners. People with crops and soybeans and corn who are having trouble with the pigs just destroying their property. So Mike, you're a farmer here in Henry County. Yes. What was some of the worst damage you've seen? Back in 2016, they wiped probably 80% of the field out over there overnight. So oh there's like goodness. probably 15 pigs in there eating. You've also seen damage to some of your neighbors in their yard. They just root their yards up too. You've seen that as well, right? Yes, they just took like a big strip in their yard and just, I mean, just like you plowed it or something. It's estimated that swine in the United States creates almost $2 billion worth of damage to crops and property. This is exciting thinking we've got the last sounder, thinking that we've eradicated the largest population of pigs in Kentucky. A lot of sleepless nights, but been well worth the effort. And again, rewarding to know that we're helping people in the county. So we also do a DNA or genetic sampling on these pigs, and it's to get a database to to hopefully figure out where these pigs are coming from and what strain of pig or what genetics they come from. You know, these pigs may come from North Carolina, they may come from Tennessee, and we're taking these samples to kind of figure that out. These boars like we have here, they typically will roam for miles looking for sows to breed with. They cover a lot of ground and are really hard to track. These traps have been really successful in getting rid of all these pigs. Traps reset. So that's it, our trap is set. Tell me about why you chose this particular location. Typically, if you can find a wallow, you can put out some corn and you'll find the pigs. Now that you've got it set, you'll back out of here and you'll watch this thing for a few days. And what happens if a couple pigs come in? I've got a camera up here in the tree. It's motion sensored. A pig will go into the trap. My camera will sense that pig and take a picture. And then that picture is then relayed to my phone. So I text my camera to drop the door and... Bam, you drop the gate and you know you've got them. Once they're in there, they'll finish up their feeding and they'll pretty much be there whenever you get here. That's right, they'll be here waiting. It's high tech, but it's the way to go. I mean, it's been a true success story. Located approximately 40 miles north of Bowling Green, Kentucky, and just a stone's throw away from Mammoth Cave National Park is the Nolan River Wildlife Management Area. This WMA is comprised of 6,400 acres of land bordering the Nolan River Lake. It's owned by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and managed for hunting and fishing opportunities by the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Nolan River Lake WMA offers excellent hunting opportunities for deer, turkey, and small game. The best access to the WMA is by boat or by permission of a private landowner to cross their property to the adjacent WMA. The property contains a mixture of wooded areas with some tracts of cleared fields and wildlife food plots. In addition to hunting, Nolan River Lake offers bountiful opportunities for fishing, boating, and other water activities. Remember that wildlife management area users must abide by the Kentucky Trapping, Hunting, and Fishing regulations. Also keep in mind that regulations on WMAs often differ from statewide regulations, so be sure to review the hunting guide or website for the specific WMA that you are hunting. For more information about this WMA or the latest regulations and restrictions that pertain to it, visit our website at fw.ky.gov or call 1-800-858-1549. Rabbit season is now in statewide here in Kentucky, and it's one of my favorite winter activities. And these conditions, well, they're perfect. Boy, thanks, Leo. Boy, thanks, Leo. 
<laughs> now, uh, listen, when we're, when we're hunting, we like to stay in line, kind of in line. We don't want to shoot each other. And we'll let the dogs go up this holler here. Hopefully, we'll kill a rabbit or two. But if not, we've got some frozen ones in the refrigerator. <laughs> we'll have you down for dinner some night. We're not going to starve one way or another. No, huh? no. We got the rabbits. Well, we're here in Nelson County with the Simpson family. And this is uh, this is your family farm that you've had for a long time. And this is kind of what you do. Right 1945. 1945. Mm -hmm. What dog you got here? This is Roscoe. Named after the Dukes of Hazard star. Oh, Roscoe, Roscoe P. Yeah, Coltrane. Oh, yeah. Coltrane. All right. And then who you got here? That's Slim. Slim Pickens. Slim Pickens and Roscoe Pico Train. Roscoe <laughs> Pico Train. Before the bad winters hit in the 70s, we didn't want dogs. They slowed us down. We'd kill 35 rabbits in a day. 77 and 78 wiped them almost completely out. They said, all be careful, OK? That's the most important part. That's right. Hey, uh, Gilly and Michael. Yeah. Kick those weeds on that side of the hill, that's the sun side. And it, if a rabbit's up there, he'll be on that side to get the early morning sun. Don't you kick it right there, Chad. Yes, sir. Two times I've run a rabbit out of there over the years. Really? Tickle me death one take off. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. There he goes. Oh, there he goes. Oh, there he goes. Oh, there he goes. Well, they're up there. Is he coming this way? Well, that sure didn't take long. Dogs coming by, get ready. And they're only about 85, 90 yards up in front of us right now. Dead. Is he dead? There you go. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Way to go, dog. Let the dogs run to him. All right. Can't kill two till you kill one. Good job, dog. <laughs> hey. What? Very first chase turns out one rabbit. That's pretty that? good. Go ahead and go, Slim. That's the way. That's the way. Call him, Gilly. Call Slim over there. Here goes Slim. Here he is. Here, Slim. Here, Slim. Here he comes. Call him. Here goes Slim. Here he is. There he is. Look. There. Good job, Roscoe. Good job. Slim. Here he is, Slim. Here he is. Look. Look. There he is. Good boy. Good boy, Slim. That's a good boy. Good run. Good run. That's the way. All right, let's get another one. Hey, no matter what that camera says, that rabbit was in a full sprint. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Running right across in front of me, no matter what the camera shows. <laughs> Beauty of rabbit hunting right here. See that stream there? Isn't that pretty? Look at this game trail here. That could be where one of them rabbits are. Could be that, could be a groundhog. But there's something down in there that he's going to stay. There he goes. Hey, rabbit, there goes rabbit, the rabbit right rabbit. there in front of you guys. Be ready, Michael. He's out in front of you, Gilly. Call the dog. Did you see it? I didn't. You see that? You see that double tree I looking do. thing? I do. About five yards back, you got that brush. It jumped yeah. right through there okay. and right into that cedar. Hey, do you want him to go ahead and take the dogs down there to yeah. it? Yeah. Go ahead. Right, go ahead. Take go the dogs ahead, down there, Gil. Well, there it comes a little bit. There okay. you go. I'm telling you, that's music right there. That is, that is music right there. You got two dogs, both of them sound very sure that they're on a bunny. They're on a bunny. There it goes, there it goes way up there. He already went through, he went through the gate. Come on, let the dogs running. We got a rabbit up. Oh, dog, here he is. <laughs> here he is. Come on, Roscoe. Come on, Slim. There you go. That's it, Roscoe. That's it. Uh-oh. Hard side. There he goes. There he, right here. Yeah. Good luck. Hey, Dad, coming your way. Headed, headed toward the campsite. If you want to head to the left, Chad, kind of where that rabbit ran. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then just head up from there. I'll kind of, I'll kind of shoot straight up through here. We'll be glad to go wherever you right. need to go. Oh, oh, there 
he goes. Let's go swim, here he is. Pretty excited about that. So we thought we saw one end right here, and the dogs came up here, but they went up, because we yeah. think there's two rabbits there, here. You might, you might be right, but I, I'm not sure. That may very well be the one I saw cut across in front of you a little bit ago. Hey, you know what I always say? You can't get three till you get two. This rabbit here, I'm sure, will be on the dinner table at the Gilly family Thanksgiving. I think he said it would be uh, biscuits and rabbit gravy, which you can't beat that. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Well, Gilly Jr., I appreciate you uh, having us out for your family. Thanks for coming. Rabbit hunt. You know, this early season rabbit hunt, a couple hour hunts, perfect. Got a couple rabbits, jumped a bunch. Oh yeah. Fun time. I think we may have worn the dogs out as well. Yeah, he, look, he looks about like he's had enough. <laughs> Interestingly enough, you, uh, you've you actually started a blog site on Facebook for people to come socialize and talk about rabbit hunting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's called Beagles and Twelve. So are you getting quite a few people coming on there telling their story now and yeah. communicating? Mm -hmm. It's a place where people can go and they can maybe get dog training help, maybe find a hunting partner, talk about shotguns that are good for rabbit hunting. Mm -hmm. It's just a really good place for people to go communicate and get some information. You know, it's really, really interesting to me to see a family that gets out here and rabbit hunts and enjoys the outdoors like you guys do, because it reminds me a lot of my family. Thank you guys to all the- Yeah, we all appreciate this, you coming out. All the Simpson family, and thanks a lot. Good luck with your page. Well, thank you. Okay, Slim, okay. Hopefully you have a freezer full of venison already. If not, you still have plenty of time. And when you get one down, here's a recipe you have to try. This is a recipe that I'm gonna show you today that is probably my family's favorite way to eat it. Now you're probably saying, well, it's backstrap. Of course it's gonna be good. There are several ways to mess up fixing a backstrap. First off, when you harvest your animal, you get the entrails out, removing all of the waste and wash it out really good. The next thing you wanna do, like I say, is get this silver seam and clean all this up. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is with a fillet knife. Now I always like to come in away from the end, that way, I don't have to hold it. If you try to start at the very, very end and get started, it's kind of tough. This will hold, hold this for me. So I get there and all I'm doing is angling the knife blade up and I start to pull. And you can take this off in big sheets. And you can see I'm, I'm wasting very, very, very little of the meat. A couple reasons I, I really enjoy eating venison. First off, I like to eat what I harvest. Uh, you don't want to eat, just harvest something and, and not actually eat it. You want to continue taking all the silver off the top. The back side here looks pretty good. Let's go to the bottom. I'm going to do a little cleanup on this too. You, you get some of this kind of stringy stuff here on the ends. You know, that is a little bit of meat right there, but it's it's got lines of really, really tough stringy stuff in it. I just always remove it. Now, once you've got it to this point right here, half the battle is already over. What I like to do once I get it to this point right here is I like to butterfly. So I'll roll this over. What I will do is I'll come in about three quarters to an, three quarters of an inch to one inch over off the side, and I'm gonna cut almost through. I'm gonna move over three quarters of an inch and that is a butterfly steak. You can tell, look at, look how tender and how that meat looks. Now we're gonna do that a couple more times here. Pretty quick, you can go right down it. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. The next thing I do is I'm gonna put them in this Ziploc baggie. And then I'm gonna, I sometimes make a marinade, but I'll tell you, it's really, 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 really hard to beat Dale's seasoning. Now myself, I prefer the low sodium blend. At this point in time, it's really simple. I just shake this up real good, so it's kind of thick and it will settle. After it's been shook up, I will put somewhere in the neighborhood of about a quarter of a cup to a half a cup in here. And I'll zip this up and push the air out. Now, if these had come from the freezer, like I want to do with this piece, I would then put these in and then I'll knead them. And I'll do that to kind of break down all that ice that's in there 
I'll set them out on the counter for a few hours and then I'll put these in there and I will knead these around until all the meat I can tell is stalled out. Now I do that because I want it to cook fairly evenly. Essentially, get it to this point, 30 minutes to an hour is all this really needs. If you leave it in there longer than that, it really is gonna take away from the flavor of the meat. The last important thing is the grill. We're gonna go out there and get the grill started. We're gonna get it at 375 to 400 degrees, and we're gonna make sure that grill is up to temperature and not going it higher or lower, and it'll maintain that temperature. So we want four, close to 400 degrees, maintain that temperature. So let's go get the grill going. We got about 30 minutes to get hot, and these are going on. Where our grill is up to temperature, it's setting at 400 degrees, and it's been now over 30 minutes, so our marinade is set in. The only thing we need to do is I do put a little bit of Cavendiers on it once it hits the grill. Other than that, five minutes per side, and we're ready to eat. All right, our grill looks perfect. We're setting it at about 400 degrees. It can be a little hotter, and that's okay as well, or just a little bit less, but you really don't want to get it much less. The object here is to cook it fast and not leave it on there very long. We're gonna go about five minutes aside. They should be perfect. Now, I like to lay these with the butterfly open part down. And the reason I do that is when I flip it, after I sear this side, it will hold that moisture as, the, as it comes out. All right, I got my steaks down. We're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of this cabin deers on. Really don't need much. Got a little bit of garlic flavor to it, a little bit of pepper. All right, we'll check on them in five minutes. All right, now all we need to do is flip them over. And you can tell they got beautiful grill marks on them. These are gonna be extremely, extremely tender. Now, I like to flip them over this way because what you'll see is all the moisture will puddle and pull in there. And when I go to pick them up, after five more minutes, I'll pick them up this way and take them and it'll keep that moisture in there. Keeps them really, really, really tender. Another shot of this. All right, five more minutes. All right, these are about ready. The number one thing is do not overcook your venison. That holds true for all wild game. We're gonna go plate these with some of our favorite vegetables and we're ready. All right, now we've got our back straps here. Obviously, we've got uh, some vegetables. I wanna show you how tender this is. A lot of people will tell you, oh man, venison, it's kind of dry, it's a little bit chewy. It's just a regular fork. Just a little bit of pressure, cuts right through. Now you can see, it's still a little bit pink in there. If you're a person who likes well done steaks, it's not gonna suit you real well because it, it does, when you overcook it, it, it gets a little bit dry. There's not the fat in this meat that you'd find in beef and that's the reason. So it literally is cut with a fork tender. And man, is it delicious. Give it a try, I'm sure your family will love it. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have a nice buck that was taken with a bow and arrow by Waylon Bowling of Clay County, Kentucky. Nice job. Jack Britt went fishing with his grandfather, Freddie Moran, at Nolan Lake and caught this trophy largemouth bass. Congratulations. Betty Ann Nally from Nelson County shot this nice nine point buck with a muzzleloader while hunting in Cumberland County. Congratulations. Mike Lagerman of Mount Washington, Kentucky took this nice bull elk in Perry County, his first elk ever. Congratulations. Here we have Zach Hine with a nice Martin County bull. This bull was a six by three. Congratulations. Now here's a fun day in the woods with Dale Douglas and Greg Ramos who got these squirrels in Mayfield, Kentucky. Nice job. Here we have Bill and Austin Johnson who caught this nice stringer of smallmouth bass that were caught and released in Lake Cumberland. Here we have Sarah Harden with a beautiful crappie caught at Taylorsville Lake. This crappie was 14 inches long. Congratulations. Check out Hayden Wren with his first channel catfish from a family farm pond in Bergen, Kentucky. Nice job. 
You're supposed to kiss your first fish ever, and that's what Sierra Wren's doing here to her first ever channel catfish from Bergen, Kentucky. Here we have Holden Cagle of Louisville, Kentucky with his very first deer ever, a nice five point buck taken in Washington County. Nice job. If you're a hunter in the state of Kentucky, this has to be your favorite time of year. Make sure you make time to get outdoors. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles. I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.